My guest in studio is the executive director of the Queen West Business Improvement Association. Rob Sysak joins us. And, Rob, we're talking a lot about graffiti this morning. I remember listening during the election campaign to Rob Ford as he said he was going to clean the city up, which I think all of us would agree, and particularly you as a businessman, would be a great thing. The question is who pays for it. When the notices first started flying, was that out of the ordinary for you as business owners on Queen Street West? Well, good morning, John. Thank you for having me on. Uh, Yeah, it was uh, quite a surprise to the West Queen West business members. At the January 21st Municipal Licensing and Standards Division Committee meeting, they made two decisions with respect to graffiti. The first was that they were going to have a comprehensive, detailed report about how the city should proceed with the removal of graffiti. And the second part was that they were to send a letter to all the involved parties asking for their input and letting them know that that was going on. At this meeting, they said that the enforcement was going to be still through the complaint process until the staff report was done. I went back to our members in the West Queen West, said graffiti is a big issue, as you said, sure. to the mayor and everybody, but we have time to prepare, and then this came as a complete shock for our members. All of these notices. And basically, the notice will say, you've got graffiti on the building that you own, you have to remove it. If you don't, we will, and we'll send you the bill. That's correct. And most of the notices give a three-day allotment for the removal of the graffiti. And when I spoke to the MLS staff, they said that's standard procedure. It's six days, three days for, to write the letter and send it in three days to remove the graffiti, you are allowed an extension if you call the MLS. Speaking to the individuals who have received the graffiti notices, they come into two groups. There's the businesses and building owners that have not commissioned any type of graffiti on their buildings. Right. So it's tagging or... Yeah. yeah, And their main concern, though, is that what plan does the city have if they pay for the removal, that in the next few days it comes right back up on the building. And those costs go from hundreds to thousands of dollars. And they can't afford to pay every two weeks whatever the cost is to remove it. And the second group are the folks who have commissioned the murals or the graffiti art. And they were taken by surprise. It's their private building. They've commissioned someone to do it with permission. And they've been asked to remove that also. So it's a little bit confusing. I don't think there's... The city's finished the report, so... Are you are you feeling victimized by this, then, or are your members feeling victimized? Well, Phil Carter, I was listening to the news update. Phil Carter, who's a member of the West Queen West, summed it up greatly. We are... You're victimizing the victim. Uh, there was a crime committed, then, then the city's asking, well, give us some money. And the crime committed on again, we want some more money. That's not a logical way to go. He seems like a fair guy. If Rob Ford and you sat down together and you guys were to come up with a formula, what would you pitch? Uh, well... Yes, we want to work with the city, and uh, we want businesses want people to come to their area, so they're going to keep it clean and make sure all that uh, happens. There's different strategies uh, out west in Vancouver. Instead of the enforcement officers, the city gave money to the BIAs. They split the cost, the capital share cost, the removal of the graffiti, because when it's constantly removed, the graffiti artists don't want to put it back up. But where businesses wanted the mural and the graffiti, it stayed. So that was that'd be one suggestion, I think. Okay, so instead of paying salaries to guys to run around, knock on doors, and hand out notices, they give you some money, you keep the neighborhood clean. Yeah, yeah. the BIs would love to do that, yes. Okay. Uh, where do you go from here? I mean, not where you're going today, but uh, <laughs> what's enough. the next step? <laughs> well, uh, the BIA, the West Queen West BIA, is going to write a letter asking the mayor and the two councillors, Michael Layton and Councillor Ann Belial, who are in the West Queen West BIA, to stop the enforcement until that comprehensive study is done. We want to work with the city. We have a lot of great ideas. We have, we're the creative heart of Toronto, the West Queen West BI. Incredible people. They'll come up with solutions. We want something fair and equitable for everybody involved. Good to have you here. Thanks for uh, dropping into the studio. Appreciate Appreciate this. Uh, Rob Sysak is the executive director of the West Queen West West Business Improvement Association. 721 is the time, minus 4 degrees.